Hello, everybody. Welcome to Squad Ops Operation Rook, our session one on Saturday. I hope everyone's having a great Saturday uh, afternoon. Uh, we're setting up here, getting all the players loaded into the server. This is a Russia versus U.S. operation. Now, we'll go more into the details of the operation uh, in a second here. Uh, my name is Karmika. I'm the founder and director of Squad Ops. And helping me with the cameras and the multi-stream perspective is Penn, our man. Uh, with the magic behind the scenes, he's going to be helping me today um, switching through the multicam. We can uh, go through and kind of show you what that looks like and send over, send it over to a couple of the cams and give you an idea of how our official streams work. We have the original overview camera, which I will be flying and commentating from, but we also are pulling streams from multiple other individuals who are participating in the event. So you'll get multiple perspectives, and you'll be able to see the battle and the operation of uh, Squad Ops Operation Rook unfold in many different perspectives. Uh, Squad Ops is a one-life event for the game squad, and uh, we focus on immersive, tactical, and teamwork-related uh, operations. Um, you can find out more about Squad Ops at squadops.gg. Um, as we can see here, all the players are loading in. We're going to be in the admin cam on my screen for the majority of the time. If you look at the top right of your screen, you can see whose camera you are watching. Right now, it should be saying Karma Cut. But as we swap around, as we just showcase the cameras, you'll see the other uh, names pop up of those cameras. Um, this is going to be a mechanized infantry versus U.S. Uh, FOB operation. Um, we can go over a couple of the assets here right now. Uh, we have a cool little uh, screen to show you that's created by the Squad Ops content creation team. So right here, you can see the overview of the operation, including the assets from how many lat kits to how many uh, medics each team gets to how many uh, armor pieces and vehicles each team gets. So as we can see here, U.S. has two logistical trucks they'll be using to supply and build their FOB, and the militia will have two MTLBs, one transport, and one Lodgy. Uh, so if we uh, look over here at this second page, you'll get more of an idea of what the exact operation is. U.S. is strong pointed in a castle on the eastern side of Narva, and uh, they're tasked with defending that FOB for the duration of the operation. Russia has to eliminate the FOB and attack it from the south, where they'll be st starting from um, Russia main. Uh, they have a secondary objective to rescue that Lodgy, which is in the center of that map. If they do so, they will have the capabilities of uh, using mortars on the assault. So that is the current operation for today. You saw the assets. You saw the objective. Uh, both teams now are setting up where they're getting ready to do their briefings. At Squad Ops, you only have one life. The second you go down, you must respond. So it's incredibly important that everyone knows the plan before the uh, operation begins so that everyone is clear on what they need to do. Um, <clears throat> you can see here that the squad leaders are pulling their squad mates together. Everyone's getting ready for the briefing. Uh, both teams have commanders. We have commanders within squad ops that kind of organize and give the team direction. And uh, before every operation, uh, we have the briefings to get everyone on board. As you can see, you're specting right now CMYK Matter, who is one of the uh, commanders for this operation. Uh, he will be leading the Russian forces against the U.S. team. So, if we uh, take a look here, we'll go through who is commanding and who is squad leading for this operation. For the Russians, we have Neural, Swine, Sightless, and Silas squad leading for the Russians. And CMYK, as I said before, is commanding for the Russians. On the U.S. side of things, we have Shadowed Ritual, Blub, Digit, Merrick, and Best Pony commanding for the Americans. Uh, so we'll go ahead and zip on over to the American side of things and the uh, castle that they are tasked with defending. And uh, as we can see here, we are... Uh, we are, they are tasked with defending this eastern castle. Uh, U.S. teams are getting set, and they're getting their squad leaders and squads all organized. Um, and yeah, we'll be kicking it off with, with the briefings here momentarily. Thereafter, use the far northern edge. And now, I do believe Russia is actually starting their briefing, so we're going to go ahead and uh, see if we can listen in on what they plan to do. All right, if everyone you know, understands it all, it all makes sense. We are going to send the capable sightlesses squad, squad number three, up to the north, they are going to position themselves with the MTLB on that BTR marker. They are going to position the MTLB there. The rest of you guys are going to be taking up positions in the building. Listen to your squad lead. He'll get you into a good position. 
you were going to be providing a little bit of suppressive fire to get their attention. The other squads, squad, let me see, the squad numbers got switched around. Give me one sec. No pressure. All right, so the capable squad one, Neural Squad, is going to mount up in our MTLB that we have here on the south side. The capable squad two, which is Swine Squad, I believe that is you, yep. Swine mm -hmm. Squad is going to be mounting up with them in that MTLB. We are going to do a large swing around the outside, following the outside road to the west. If you watch... No. Old cops. <laughs> Old cops. <laughs> it's fine, guys. Anyway. So, we're going to swing the whole way around the outside, and we are going to eventually end up on the north side of the castle. We are going to dismount at a location that I am about to mark with an enemy helmet mark. If it will actually work. Even a mark. Anyway, there we go. There we go. So, friend fob mark. We're going to dismount there. Uh, also, squad uh, four, which is, I believe that is, my bad, Silas's squad. Yeah, Silas's squad is going to mount up in the transport truck. They're going to come with us as well around that big outside swing. We're all going to dismount up there, and we are going to clear village from the north. The northern village. We need to attack that. Clear it. We are going to put in from the north as we get close to the assault position. Squad. Our sightless squad on the south is going to start providing heavy cover fire, and they are going to start advancing. The MTLB is going to provide cover fire from the north. The other MTLB is going to provide cover fire from the south, and we are all going to push on Herman Castle in a north-south pincer assault. We are not touching the Lodgy at all. Forget about the Lodgy. It is not your friend. We are going to leave it alone. We are going to go around, destroy all the Americans, and then we're going to pick that thing up after. Everybody understand? Yep. <laughs> four. All right, yeah. Right. Cool. Copy. All right. Copy, copy. Let's go ahead and get them broken out. Sorry for the uh, messed up mic shit. That was my bad. Woo! Yeah. Good job, yeah, man. No right now. All right. So as we can see now, the uh, militia, or excuse me, the Russians have their plan. They are going to pincer the castle from the north and the south simultaneously. One of the assets they will be using in the assault is the MTLB. The MTLB is an APC carrier, and it is uh, able to fit about 19 soldiers in it. It's got decent armor and it, a uh, decent weapon attached to it. It's mainly used for transport and light fire support. Uh, this thing cannot go toe to toe with much else. It'll take two uh, lat hits from American rockets to disable the LA or to disable the disable the MTLB. As we uh, as you'll see right here, we'll pull up some in-game stats on the MTLB, and uh, you guys will be able to see that. Make sure you guys have your lat ready to jump out if uh, need be for the MTLB if we run into it. Or not the MTLB, the fucking Lodgy trucks. All right, both teams are ready. They have completed both their briefings, and we're going to be setting live here pretty soon, as soon as both teams uh, determine a live time. But yeah, pretty exciting things. We'll see how this pincer attack goes for Russian. Uh, we'll zoom on over here to the fortress, and you'll be able to see kind of the avenues attack and what kind of terrain it's going to look like. Uh, right now, you're watching Shadow Ritual, who's on the U.S., and uh, they're getting all set up. They've done their briefing. They've set their squads in the proper locations, and uh, everyone's waiting here for live. Once again, this is a Squad Ops One Life operation. Uh, you can so learn I'll more about Squad Ops at squadops.gg. And uh, my name is Karma Cut. I'm the uh, director and founder of Squad Ops. We host open events, training, and of, and public servers for anyone who wants to get in on them. So check out squadops.gg for more information. The wall, unless it's blocked off, then take the stairway. So MVP, these are the two uh, logistical around. trucks that the U.S. will get to use to build up their fob. They'll be running uh, supply runs. From yeah, this, uh, 
compound to main and back. And if they're able to get enough runs in, U.S. can really build up the defenses. We now have a live time, which is 141. That's live in 40 seconds. So in about 40 seconds here, both teams will be weapons free. Uh, vehicles will uh, be allowed to move. And the teams will start to roll out on their plans. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of defense the U.S. plans on making. It does look like they plan on doing logi runs. They have almost a full squad here running the logis. Uh, so let's see how many runs they can uh, end up getting getting in. Otherwise, as you can see, there's a nice moat that surrounds the castle, pretty much eliminating any assault from the west. A river on the east, making the east a really hard approach as well. So north and south are pretty much the only ways you can uh, approach the castle. The north providing the most cover with that rocks and that village. The south being a little bit more open with a moat. However, there are buildings on the west that the Russians can use to uh, suppress the castle if they so choose, as those second and third story buildings provide a lot of site americans now pushing off looks like they're going to put an infantry squad in the north village uh to kind of screen that area as they do have great lines of sight to the south and the west with that moat and lower ground the lodge uh, uh the lodges as well pushing off to main getting those supplies we're going to zip on over back to uh russia and see how their initial push is looking you'll catch up the mtlb slow So as we can see, these MTLB gunner and drivers pushing out now on the west side of the map. Uh, we also have one on the south side setting up for that south base of fire and uh, support. Direct access to that castle's fire sites. So XF is part of this south team. His squad will be watching the south end of the castle and trying to put on suppressive fire on the target from the south. However, it does look like U.S. has spotted or heard the MTLB and they're moving to either flank it from the west or uh, start putting on fire from the parapets. We can see here now Russian infantry pushing through the south town, uh, getting into a defensive position and a position uh, from which they can engage the castle. Uh, let's take a look if any U.S. has actually spotted these guys. That's why you had the circle of holes in it. It might protect us. Stay well west of US it does not look like the U.S. is aware of that south team. They might have heard the MTLB, but they don't have eyes on it yet. There is a U.S. fire team in this southwest building. This building is pretty pivotal. As you can see, it has a lot of line of sight in almost every direction. So if the Russians try to push south to north across that moat, they're going to get cross-fired by this fire team in this building, as well as the people on the parapets. We see these lodges returning from Maine with full supplies. They'll be dumping here soon. And we'll see what kind of defense Best Pony decides to uh, build. Are we free to engage the lodge if we cross the bridge in the uh, direction? Sandbags already going down here for the U.S. Looks like they're going to start uh, reinforcing the entrances, which is a good choice. And yeah, it mainly looks like this South Russian squad is going to hold tight until the North does that wraparound flank. That will be quite a while, so they're going to be uh, pretty much hardened up for a good amount of time here. We're going back to Matter, who once again is Russian command. He's in the MTLB on the west side of the map. And uh, once again, their plan is to loop far around the west and the north side of the map, coming down on the castle north to south. However, the U.S. Excuse me, he's in the transport truck. However, the U.S. does have an infantry squad on that objective where they plan on dismounting. You can see now these uh, vehicles fully loaded with infantry are going to wrap around the map. Well Looking at the map here, this Lodgy might hear these vehicles. This Lodgy is swooping in well within audio, but his engine might be too loud to hear that northern uh, vehicle push. So. We'll see if that driver made that call out or if his engine was too loud. Taking a look at the map here, we're going to zoom all the way out. We can see those lodges from U.S. are using that safe side road on the north side of the MSR that runs uh, northwest to southeast through the map. And uh, you can see Squad 3 from the U.S. is entrenched in those northern compounds. So we'll see if Russia does a good job pushing the... Uh, pushing the... Uh, compound on that north squad three from russia set up on that south waiting until the northern two vehicles reach their location shots right, fired here from the south it looks like that south russian squad is engaging the castle there is mtlb fire suppressing targets and windows best pony the commander of the u.s team almost gets taken out but uh he's now uh, behind some cover 
Uh, and the U.S. now has a 50 cal bunker also set up on this uh, south. So this could do some major damage. It's in a very good location here. RPG is going out. Or excuse me, that was a law shot. Uh, trying to hit a MTLB in that village. Do you have a good video on that vehicle? 50 cal set up, starting, starting to send rounds south into the town. I'm not sure if he actually sees, but he's... Uh, Engaging and putting some shots onto what he suspects would be enemy positions. Not said open fire. In fact, I specifically said not to open fire. And that's just the South Russian squad no, drawing attention sorry. and pressure to the south, uh, trying to let that northern squad get in a little closer. As we can see, Lodge is still making those runs. There's going to be a lot of a uh, lot of defenses here. As oh, looks like the U.S. does plan on putting a mortar pit up, so we will most likely see mortar rounds uh, further into this round as they get. Uh, someone to man that mortar. Maybe, uh, it does look like the US has some scouts up here on the north. They're going to see this MTLB and this northern flank is going to get spotted. So we'll see how the US reacts to this information, seeing not only one vehicle, right. but the MTLB and the trans rolling up Stop on this here, position. This could be this could be very deadly yeah, right here. We have two US soldiers here and they're here, about dismount. to dismount in front of these troops. This could be very deadly. One frag grenade and that's an uh, entire squad. Uh, all right, one and two. You are going to push off to the west and clear oh, down. Oh, no one's pulling village. their frags. You are going to push off to the west and clear down through village. Four, you are going to start pushing southward. This, from this is when you would use your frag grenades. They need to Shots. be using their grenades. Nope. And this is just one of those moments where you have to rem remember the tools that you have in your arsenal. And remember to use those. One grenade goes out. This could be devastating. MTLB, get yourself in the position. Uh, Only one, one player goes down. Nacho gets hit with a uh, the fragmentation. He's bleeding. So does so is the neural. These two U.S. troops are going to try to pull off the hill. Three, start up to that fire if you could. Three, and they, it looks like they will be able to make could. it out unless those uh, infantry on the right hand side of that hill can spot these guys. But these guys are going to pull out pretty successfully. That was really close for both teams. Uh, if the U.S. had pull frags earlier, that could have been some massive casualties on their side. All fire! All fire! All fire! All right, if I can kill the gunner, good work. XF on the south now. Both Russian teams are engaged. Rooftop, south rooftop, team is engaging the castle, three, four, and the north two. team is engaging the entrenched oh, U.S. infantry in the town. Back up, back up, one. All right, two, four, start maneuvering south. I know it's going to be the rough, but we need to get through. We can't stop here. They're going to reply with mortars. As we can Got see me. here, squad... Uh, who is this? Squad 3 from the Americans hey, is doing a great job of holding off two times Russian infantry squads, plus the MTLB slowing down this assault. Uh, Best Pony has his mortar up, but he has not fired a round yet. We're going to see what happens. The south doesn't seem to be pushing from the Russians either, so Best Pony's weakest side is going to be the north, where both infantry squads plus the MTLB will be coming down north to south. Uh, his third squad is now entrenched within the town. They have pulled off the initial hills to the north, and they are now going to hardpoint this area. We can see can CMYK Matter abusing the terrain, making sure that he's using the uh, path of least resistance, with which right now is this kind of road on the side of the river. He's using this defilade to get close into the castle because the castle does not have line of sight into this uh, little, little uh, draw. As we can see, Matter has done a great job of splitting up his team. He's got one squad pushing north to south on the uh, direct onto the town, and then he has the MTLB plus supporting infantry squad pushing along the river. He's doing a great job of spraying out his forces, keeping that momentum up. We talk about a momentum a lot when we uh, play squad up, simply because you can really see how important it is to keep that pressure up, keep pushing, and keep it consistent. Because the second you let up, you lose that momentum, and you can get pushed back fairly easily. That MTLB in the north now, now set up, has eyes on the castle, engaging and suppressing targets. Both MTLBs from the north and south now in a good position. CMYK Matter, the Russian commander, is now down. So Russian is now without command. Squad leaders will now have to fill that command role and figure out what to do Did next. Just say command is down? I don't know. Uh, that was definitely down. This northern squad from Russia getting really pinned down. You see them popping smokes, trying to break line of sight and try to get in closer to engage the U.S. forces within the town. This Matter western, uh, not... excuse me, this easternmost yeah. element with the MTLB trading shots with the tower. But they are getting tagged up by the 50 cal that's in place on the roof. We'll see if either one goes down. MTLB is taking a lot of 50 cal fire. 
And both teams on this north are now pinned from the castle and this squad on the north. So the Russian squad on the south does not have too much pressure being put on it right now. But as I said before, as we highlighted this terrain, it is extremely dangerous to cross the south. There's an open field. You have enemy cover from the west and north with elevation. It's going to be extremely hard to push this south. However, it only it looks like that northern push from the Russians is drawing a lot of eyes up there. There's only one, maybe two people watching the southwest and this draw that the russians are using right now in the southeast might be enough to get them within uh, engagement range with their rifles report. there are not enough eyes we talk about 360 degree security all the time at squad ops and why it's so important this is one of the reasons why it is so important if you leave one flank over if you leave one sector over you can uh, really leave an opportunity for the enemy to exploit that and the russians are doing a great job of that now using the distraction to the north of both their squads and allowing this gap in the south slowly bounding up by fire team to try to get inside the castle we're going to zoom back over here to the north and take a look at how this engagement is going both russian squads still taking it slow there's one american actually extremely close to this fire team on the east russians trying to push in from the north that draw is allowing them to get in pretty close uh while breaking line of sight from the castle uh but there is a u.s soldier over here who could cause a lot of damage but it does like he's been look like he's been spotted they're trading shots back and forth he might go down right here uh russians clean up that kill they now have pretty much full control over the eastern side with the river and this northern squad still trying to find an avenue into the town. You can see these roads are creating a massive barrier. But they're slowly smoking and pushing forward. Methodical, uh, consistent aggression is what is needed from that north Russian team right now. We can see U.S. Lodgy still running back and forth. Oh, you wanted? We're on the southeast entrance now. U.S. Hey, finally has uh, comms that they are getting pushed from the southeast. They realized that they left that south gap open. Russians now have a semi foothold on this south side of the castle, and they're going to try to push in uh, using grenades and uh, small arms fire. This south Russian squad making great progress with that distraction to the north. We'll see if U.S. is able to adjust in time to uh, to handle this con uh, attack on the south. We almost have a full Russian squad here within 100 meters on the south side of the castle. MTLB support pushing up from the south as well. We'll see if he's able to get eyes on and uh, suppress the parapets. That's the main danger right now for the southern squad is the high ground that they are advancing towards. That high ground is going to be extremely deadly. XF on the south here in the MTLB. He's going to see if he can put down suppressive fire for his infantry in front. Call outs going to the driver. Let's see if XF, XF putting fire on those, on those parapets, suppressing that target, allowing the infantry to get in closer. It's incredibly important in squad ops and within uh, other tactical, tactical games to get that suppression on target, to put rounds down range, even if you're not sure if you're going to hit them. That fear and that suppression relieves a lot of pressure from yourself and your teammates for you to get stuff done, whether it be moving, firing, or uh, capturing objectives. Putting suppressive fire on targets allows you to, uh, to make certain calls and gives you that freedom to do what you need to do this western uh excuse me this eastern squad has pushed up pretty far now they're on the close northeast side of the castle we can see u.s squad three pulling back into the castle completely conceding those that northern village to the uh russians and we'll see if that gives russia enough uh freedom to push into their positions where they want to be before they breach however no mortars yet from either team uh, russia's decided to forgo the uh, logi truck and set up that mortar fob but u.s still has not fired a single mortar and i really feel like that is something that they need to be using something that they need to be uh utilizing to deter enemy uh, push from the north and south south on the south side of the castle, Russians trying to figure out how they want to breach, but there is a saw locking down that southeast uh, corner. You can hear that going on right now. That amount of firepower and that th that amount of rounds is really deterring the Russians from pushing in. Right now, you'd want to use frags and grenades. Once again, we talk about those tools that every infantryman has to use uh, properly and to 
allow them to, to breach certain areas. You need to use those tools. You need to be able to use your smokes, grenades, your GLs, your laws. You need to be able to think outside the box with those tools to allow you uh, certain avenues of advance. We heard a couple mortars round go out from the US. It looks like they're deciding to mortar the south end of the castle. We'll see if these rounds land anywhere close. These rounds land extremely close to the MTLB, landing on top of the MTLB. MTLB takes two mortar rounds. It is on fire. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough to destroy it, but it is going to be able to push off from the uh, from the position it previously was at. It might even explode here. Both crew members abandoning the, abandoning the vehicle. This might be it for the MTLB. We'll see here. But excellent mortar rounds from the U.S. using that indirect fire to really push off that MTLB and relieve that pressure on the south. Now, these Russians on the south without MTLB support are going to get really pinned down here, especially as we talked about from before, that high ground. These parapets on the south and that high ground on the north is really going to make breaching these ruins on the south extremely difficult. Still no progress on that south from the Russians. U.S. doing an amazing job using mortars. More mortars coming out. We'll see where these land. If these are able to take out the more, uh, the uh, MTLB, I don't think so. We can see that MTLB moving completely off from that eastern side to the western side. So that that's an extremely uh, mobile MTLB. But if these rounds are landing anywhere near that south entrance, if he's zeroed for 50 meters, this could be devastating to the south infantry. But we'll see where these mortars land. These mortars are landing on the south. One Russian player goes down on the mortars. Danger close mortars on the south doing exactly what they need to be doing right now, which is hitting over this uh, this wall, which is creating a line of sight barrier for the U.S. Using yes, indirect here. fire to great effect. This South Russian team now in a great amount of trouble. No MTLB support. They're getting mortared. They have a saw locking down their position. And they are pretty much going to be fixed there until they can get uh, relief from the other squads. As we can see here, this Eastern squad and Eastern MTLB still making a lot of progress. They are now on the direct east of the objective within 100 meters. MTLB putting suppressed fire on the tower. But we'll see how much closer these Northern squads can get. We see that relief in pressure. We see that break in the momentum. Uh, now that command is down from Russia uh, command, it's a lot harder to get squads to move. There's no single point of direction unless the squad leader steps up and takes that direction. But we'll see how close these northern squads can get. We talked about roads before and how much of a barrier they do uh, they do pose. This long stretch of land, also called a... Uh... <clears throat> What's going on over here? The... The road is cutting off that northern squad extremely. So you can see the Russians are really hesitant to cross this road with zero cover for about 50 meters. There's no cover from the north to south side of this road. And there are U.S. in the high ground and the parapets watching and waiting for their opportunity to strike. We can see this Russian squad on the south still being locked down. They're getting whittled down here by mortars, grenades, and saws. They are really in a bad position. MTLB is choosing to poke out again. Puts fire on that 50 cal bunker on the hill. And we can see US is just waiting. They are set and ready for the Russians to try to breach this. We, call, we talked about the saw before and how it's used within squad and how that amount of firepower should be utilized. And this is a perfect place and opportunity for the saw. As we can see here, just now laying down fire. Even if he doesn't have a confirmed target, he knows they're over there. And that suppression will stop Russians from advancing. And U.S. now in a very, very precarious, uh, excuse me, Russia's now in a very, very precarious position. We talked about this fire team earlier and how they would have a crossfire on the Russians if they cross from the south. And that is exactly what we are seeing now. We're seeing Russians trying to cross the south moat, but we have a saw up here. We have a fire team that is looking northeast. This MTLB actually extremely close, but does not is not aware of the fire team to its southwest. We're going to try and record it. Uh, we're just going to try and get fob now, picking guys I don't know, man, that... Russia's, uh, it seems like Russia's plan now is to kind of get a perimeter. We see RPGs hitting the target. We see, uh, that the Russians' main objective now, or main, uh, strategy is to get superior positioning with the MTLBs and with these rocks and attempt to pick players off the roofs. RPG goes out from the U.S., attempts to land on the MTLB in the Northwest, misses, does not connect, but this MTLB will be forced to, uh, to move a little bit back as he's, he's a little bit scared now that he's been sighted by an anti-tank uh, soldier. But yeah, we can see now Russia really trying to figure out how they want to breach this. Without mortar support, they do not have um, the tools to really dismantle the defenses.
More mortars coming out from U.S. We'll see with those land. Those look like they're directed at the MTLB. We'll see if U.S. can get a little lucky again and land rounds directly on top of the MTLB. We're sit here. We're, we will sit here and uh, see where these rounds land. Excellent mortars again by the U.S. One round lands right onto the MTLB. This MTLB is going to be forced to be pushed off here. And uh, excellent use. RPG does not connect. Uh, but yeah, that MTLB is now forced to relocate as it's been zeroed by the mortars. Excellent firing by the uh, U.S. mortar team using their mortars to counter the MTLB's uh, base of fire positions and uh, abusing that range and that indirect fire capability. We can see now... Uh, Russia formulating a new plan. They're going to have a team up here on the North Rocks suppressing the targets with this high ground, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Americans on the parapets, and a Russian team sneaking in underneath the supporting fire, trying to breach. We'll see how successful there is. There's sandbags. There's infantry watching the stairs. It's going to be extremely difficult to breach that staircase. We have a U more U.S. mortars going out. We'll see uh, where these land. These might be landing on the Northern Rocks. We'll see here in a second where these land. These are landing on the northern rocks. Once again, Russian casualty to the mortar. Excellent mortar rounds. Using that indirect fire to their advantage. Pushing the Russians off the uh, off where they're getting comfortable. You need to be able to use those tools. I talked about them before. It's not just a rifle. It's not just gun skill. Use your grenades. Use the mortars. Use the law. Use your grenadier. Use the MTLBs. Use your smokes. Use everything you can to get the job done. We see frag grenades trading in between this uh, little staircase. Frag goes out, gets one you uh run run one Russian player. They're trying to smoke and breach. Excellent use of the smokes to break the uh, line of sight from the uh from the U.S. And a successful breach here by the Russians. They are pushing in with aggression. You can see that aggression right now as they breach. In, it's important to get that ground, get that foothold, and continue pushing. You cannot get stuck at this entrance. We'll see how well they're able to breach this. But smokes going out, doing an excellent job of concealing their movement and their push. We see that aggression. They're flooding into the compound. More mortars taking out that northern side. We can see a lot of the Russians that were on that support by fire position are now elim eliminated because of the mortars. Russians now pushing in using that smoke. They need to continue the, using that pressure, especially while that smoke is still active. They only get a limited amount of smokes. And if they get caught in the open here with these smokes, um, as, they, as these smokes disappear, it's going to be extremely harder to be pushing anywhere further into the compound so we'll see if they're able to exploit the duration of these smokes uh, or if they're going to end up getting stuck on the northern side of the map russians now breaching you can see that aggression and uh that that flow of troops is really doing a number on the u.s they can't see they're in angles that are not being covered and russia is now doing a great job of pushing into the compound we'll see how well they can keep this up though Russians trying to breach the southern, uh, the the I'm sorry, the lower part of the compound. I think I got it. Now we talk a lot about combat spacing. Right now, frag grenade goes out. Is this spacing enough? It is. But you must be aware of your battle space. We talk about battle space a lot in squad ops as well. It's incredibly important to be mindful of the space between yourself and others around you. Simply because if grenades are coming at you, you cannot get stuck on each other. You cannot allow that grenade to get more than two, three people on your squad or your fire team. That would do devastating amount of damage. If the Russians have any great grenades right now, it would be a perfect time to lob them over this hill and attempt to get these, uh, these Americans on the other side. Russian uh, momentum on this north has been stopped. There is a good amount of bunkers and... Uh, Cover here for U.S. to kind of stop them on this north. We talked about that smoke dissipating before and how Russians would get stuck. As you can see now, the the picture looks a lot different when there is no smoke. There's a lot of line of sight. There's a lot of areas that U.S. can cover from. You need to abuse that smoke while it's active. Russians trying to crawl along the north here and on the sides. Russians trying to breach from all sides right now. and they It might work and might be able to catch a lot of the U.S. Uh, Unawares. Shadow Ritual does go down. He is the, uh, who is he? What is he doing? He's squad leader. Right? Yep. Shadow Ritual goes down as a squad leader. The MTLB on the south is still up, but remember, it took two mortar rounds, so it is massively damaged. We'll see if this MTLB can move into any position to assist the Russian assault. 
Uh, doesn't look like there are any Americans except for those two on the south outside the compound. Most of the U.S. are now uh, embedded within the compound itself and are holding a close defense. We see RPGs going out. Actually manages to get, I think that's best pony. That we talk about combat spacing. This is this is why you need combat spacing. You cannot lose three guys to one grenade. You need to be mindful of the space between yourself and others. That right there gave the that right there that one situation gave Russia the momentum they need to take this entire top compound. That's all the U.S. defense in this north com in, in in the uh, upper compound. That one grenade was able to turn the tide of this entire top battle, and Russia really has a real chance of taking this game back and winning this round. Pushing in. Using their tools, Russia's doing an amazing job right now. We'll see if they can keep it up. On the stairs, on the stairs. On the stairs. These buildings on the south, however, really proving to be an obstacle for Russia to push in. All right, we're gonna be losing the one. Everyone help, everyone help. Try to look at the bridge. They're pushing in on the north. Things are slowing down here as uh, players are getting whittled out, but we do see that aggression still remaining from Russia. Look at how they push in, even though uh, they know that the numbers are low. They're trying to maintain that pressure because the second you, because as you apply more and more pressure, you limit the ability of the enemy team to think. And right now, the Russians are doing a great amount of pressure on the western side as well as digging up the enemy fob which is the objective of this operation. So Russia is working on taking out their main primary objective, which is the enemy radio. And they might be able to do that with the pressure on the west as well. Careful, Ev. There was a Russian right over there. However, that, that U.S. squad that was outside the compound now picking off uh, Russians on the uh, who are stunned, stuck on the outside wall. And these, these uh, two Russian soldiers might be uh, going down here momentarily. They're doing a good job of fighting back, but it does look like we are now down to 4v7, maybe 4v, 4v8. Russia is still trying to breach. They're dealing with contacts outside of the compound as well as contacts within. Uh, and these two soldiers right here are pinned in between two enemy elements. And you can really start to see them kind of panic with that pressure being put on them. U.S. really strong pointing these single compounds, uh, these single buildings within the uh, compound. But Russia doing a great job keeping that momentum up, keeping the, uh, that pressure up and pushing in and further. And we can see now they're one by one securing these buildings. If things keep going this way, Russia will be able to pull this match back and be able to eliminate all the U.S. Frag grenades were being used to great effect. We'll see if these remaining soldiers are able to hold the compound. Or if Russia is able to take them out one by one. A lot of small one-on-one -on -one skirmishes going right now. Russians still maintaining that pressure. Keeping up that pressure. You can see that pressure is extremely important. Using that aggression to their advantage. All the U.S. soldiers in the compound have now been killed. Russia now has full control over the compound. The only players left alive are the two on the west on the cross from the moat. So we'll see if Russia is able to hold and complete their objective uh, with their team alive. Or if these two U.S. soldiers are able to uh, swing back and recapture the compound. However, it does look they've already been spotted. If things are looking really good for Russia. We saw that key grenade go off on the upper side of the compound, really turning the tide for uh, Russia. And now these two U.S. soldiers are all that remains of the U.S. team. On the south no, no, side. No, 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 they're not gonna know which way we're going. <laughs> Alright, I'm covering the bridge and I'm covering that side. We're gonna use that. We'll see what happens. But they're pretty pinned here. That squad leader up on the parapet does have them sighted and he's waiting for an opportunity to uh, engage that is squad leader silas for the russians right now who has eyes on we'll see how much you can I see here yeah, i'm trying to find you i want to start over there 
Oh, he's gonna have an opportunity here in a second. He's just gotta remain vigilant. He's gotta remain vigilant. Guys, cross this bridge. There he goes. That's one U.S. soldier dead. So something, if you really pay attention to the details of the inf oh, oh, and that's it. That's it. That's game. Russia may was able to pull back a win with great pressure. You could say the aggression really working out on the north and on the west side of the compound, keeping the U.S. on their toes. Those grenades, those smokes breaching the compound did an excellent job of blocking the line of sight, allowing the Russians to breach, and then grenades mopping up U.S. infantry that was not aware of their combat space. But great job from Russia to pull that back. It was looking pretty dire for them uh, there, but great work yeah, on both yeah. teams. U.S. Yeah, using yeah. mortars to great effect both on enemy support by fire positions and on the enemy armor. And the uh, Russians doing a great job of using smokes and frags to get into the compound and hold it. That was round one of SquadOps.gg's Operation Rook, a one-life event. If you'd like to learn more about SquadOps, check out SquadOps.gg. We'll be right back after a short intermission with round two. I, uh, where we'll be uh, watching the opposite team on uh, this side. So we'll be spectating Best Pony and his squad leaders on the Russian attack. But we'll be right back after a short intermission. My name is Karmakut. I'm the founder and director of uh, Squad Ops. Thank you so much for joining us for round one. We'll be jumping into round two in a couple minutes here. We'll play some trailers for you and uh, some things in the intermission. But until, uh, until then, just sit tight. Go use the bathroom. Go get some food. We'll be right back with round two.